All right, algebra one, lesson 72. This one is factors that are sums and pyramids and cones. Two totally different lessons, okay? So, this one's what it says to do in example 72, one factor, and then it says this, a plus b, in parentheses, x squared minus a plus b, x minus, I'm running out of room, 6, a plus b, like that. Now this one actually breaks it down very simply for us. Because when you're factoring something, what you're doing is trying to find the common that's in between all three of them. Hopefully you can see that A, a plus, plus B, B is our common. So we're going to leave it in its parentheses form, A plus B. And so I'm just basically going to take those out of the problems. Okay, and now we're just going to write what's left, X squared minus X minus 6. Okay, we put that in parentheses. All right, and now you're going to continue factoring. You're going to leave this alone, and you're just going to do like what we've normally been doing, x and x, and then coming up with, I'm going to put a plus a negative 1 plus a negative. Okay, so I just, this one did not have a number with it, so I went on and made it a 1 with it, and then I changed this minus to a plus negative, plus negative. Okay, so now I'm trying to come up with what times what equals 6 to then have 1. So what do you think? Uh... It could be 6 and 1. Or no. Well, that three. would be 2 uh, and 3. 3 and 2, yeah. Let's do 2 and 3. All right, in order for me to um, get a negative 1 here when I subtract. Positive 2, negative 3. Positive 2, negative, whoops, negative 3. Let's see if that works. Um, a positive 2 and negative 3 would make it a negative 1 good. And a positive 2 times a negative 3 would make it a negative 6. Very good. So then we just bring our A plus B down. And that becomes the whole entire answer. Got it? Yep. All right, let's try another one. Make sure you're fully getting it. All right, this one says x plus y in parentheses, x squared. Now pay attention to these because some of these may change up. 9x, x plus y, and plus 20, x plus y. Okay, this one's easy again. <laughs> We're just going to pull out the x plus y and keep it in parentheses. Okay, to factor it out for the best. And then we're going to bring everything else down. x squared plus 9x plus 20. And then we're going to do like normal. x, x, 5 and 4. 5 times 4 is 20. And if I do, um, I'm going to have to subtract. Huh. So what needs to be done here? Let me look at that. So just a positive, yeah, on both of them. Because five, positive 5 and positive 4 make a positive 20. And then when I um, add 5x plus 4x, I get 9x. Good. Okay, and so you just write down the x plus y. So that's the final answer right there. Those are, to me, pretty simple. Now this next one may be a little bit harder, so really pay attention to this one. Um, this one says factor, and then it has an m. And then it's got x minus 1, x squared, which is kind of weird, plus 7mx, x minus 1, plus 10m, x minus 1. Okay, what do you notice this one has all x of them? Minus one. It has an x minus 1, and there's one more thing. Mm -hmm. M. Mm -hmm. So the m and the x minus 1, m, x minus 1, and m, x minus 1. So what we're going to do is put m, x minus 1, all that in parentheses, and then bring down the rest. So then I have x squared plus 7x plus 10. See what I did? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Just yeah. leave it. It's fine. And then we're going to break down like we're used to, all right? So, um, again, this x and x, 5 and 2, I think is going to be what works out. Yep, and then a positive of both. Yep, there we go. That one was pretty simple. And you just bring down this m, x minus 1 in front of those, okay? And that's the final answer. So those weren't too hard, um, but just so you know. All right, 
Now, it moves over and starts talking about pyramids and cones. Now, um, I'm going to do a little bit of vocabulary, which I'm not a big vocabulary person, but let's just look at these together so I don't have to, like, teach about it because there's really not anything to teach about this portion. You just have to know the vocabulary, kind of. So, let's talk about these. Um, pyramids and cones. The first thing we're going to be looking at is pyramids on page 292. Pyramids, um, let's look at this one just to show you real quickly. All right, can I see this? Up? Can you see this? Yes. Okay, so a vertex is where all the points meet together. Even this down here, this point down here is a vertex, a vertex, a vertex, a vertex. All right, vertexes. Lateral edge. Lateral um, is used to describe the middle portion, basically, this middle area. Mm -hmm. And the edge, that would be a lateral edge. One of the edges, this is even a lateral edge. That's a lateral edge. That's a lateral edge. Okay? A lateral face is each of the faces around it. So this is a face, this one's a face, and this one's a face. And then you have your base, which is what it's sitting on. Um, okay? And then altitude is pretty much height. Yeah. Height is the actual how tall is it, and altitude is just showing you that's the height. Okay? Same thing over here, it's just slanted. Um, okay? Uh, now, it's important to know that this one is slanted, and so I want you to see this altitude is straight. Height always has to do from the bottom to the top. It can't measure the slant. So know that. Okay. So there you go. That's the to show you that. Now, the next thing I want to show you is this. When you hear the word regular in math, what does that mean? Do you remember? I do not. It means that all, it's a very, it's a perfect, pretty much, perfect um, shape, meaning that everything has equal lengths, okay? So when you hear regular triangle py pyramid, all of these are um, the same so if these were five centimeters, then this would be five, this would be five, this would be five, this would be five, this would be five. That's a regular um, triangle pyramid. Okay, look at this square pyramid. Again, if this one's five, this one's five, this one's five, this one's five. Regular means that. So this one's a square pyramid, meaning the square is on the bottom. This one is a rectangular pyramid, and it's called a right rectangular, which just means... Um, that this one is uh, makes perfect square corners in the corners for the uh, rectangle. And then this regular pentagon pyramid, it, the regular again means that all of these bottom, all the sides are equal. So if this is five, this one's five, this one's five, so it's big. Okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is cones. Um, a cone is like a pyramid except that the middle portion um, does not have uh, lines in it. It's just one middle section. Mm -hmm. Okay? Again, it has a base. It has a vertex. It has the lateral uh, surface all around. Okay? It even has the altitude straight ahead. Straight up. Okay? You got it? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, getting to the important part of what the lesson's about is this. And I want you to write this down. And just like you've memorized um, what's the area of a triangle, it's base times height divided by 2. You need to memorize this. The volume of pyramids, pyramids and cones, the volume of pyramids and cones is one-third of the area times the base. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by that. Um, let's take a pyramid, for example, um, and I'm going to try to draw this. Um, let's say I had, okay, <laughs> this might be hard. <laughs> Maybe lie or somebody to help me. <laughs> okay, see that? Stay with me. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, if we were going to find the volume of this, I would do um, the base times width times height, which the area of the base is base times width, or air, um, length times width. That's the area of the base, and then times the height. So uh, length, width, and then this is the height. So I would find the area of the base, and then times it by the height. With a pyramid, let's talk about pyramids at first. 
it would be something like this. I would have my base, this would be a rectangular pyramid, with, doing my best, okay, someone like that. So guess what? This shape, if I were to take that out, it would be a third of this. Do you understand? Yes. It makes up one third of this whole piece. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm multiplying. I'm taking the area of the base as if the pyramid's not in here. I'm trying to find the area um, of this bottom shape, the base, and then times it. Whoops, I'm, I'm sorry. I wrote base. Area of the base times the height. Change that on your paper. I'm sorry. Hopefully you caught that when I said it. Um, so you're always finding the area of the base times the height. That's what volume is. But um, when you're finding a pyramid, you're doing a third of it. So we would find the area of the base and multiply it times the height. Because it's a pyramid, we're going to take the answer to that and multiply it by a third, which gives us a third of the amount. Because that's what this uh, pyramid makes up is a third of that amount. You feel like you understand? Yes. So it's always best to determine what is my base. My base is a pyramid, uh, is a rectangle. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then my height. So it's always important to find the area of the base and then multiply it from the height. And because we're working with pyramids, you take a third of it because a pyramid is a third of that. All right? So let's try, um, let's try to find the volume now that you know Let's just do a pyramid. Um, here's the pyramid that they draw. Okay, bless my heart. Okay, it's supposed to be straight, but it's not. It's okay. Just pretend like it is. Now, I'm going to make these dots so you can see that's on the inside. Okay, because that kind of look sort of normal. Okay, now, this is 9 inches, 7 inches, and then they're going to draw a height from the bottom of the midsection, actually, to be here, to the top, and I'm going to have to slant it even though it's really straight up and down. Okay, so say with me, the altitude is 8 inches. So this is actually supposed to be the tip. There. That looks sort of semi-better. That shows the middle of this section all the way to the top. That's the height. That's eight inches. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so what am I going to do to find this answer? Well, we're taking the area of the base, area of base, and multiplying it times the height, and then we're going to take a third of that to get our answer. Because why? Because it's a pyramid. Okay? You would almost have to see it like this is our, uh, I'm trying to draw it. Anyway, pretend like this is a box, and then a third of that box is this pyramid. Okay, so let's find the area of the base. Our base is a uh, rectangle, so the rectangle area is 9 times 7, 63 inches squared, because we're multiplying two of them. Times the height, or the height is 8, so 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 6 is 48, 9, 50, 504 inches cubed is the answer, but th that would be the answer if it was a box. But it's not a box, it's a pyramid, so we're going to have to take a third of that. So one third of that is basically dividing it by 3. 3 goes into that, and the answer is going to end up being 168 inches cubed. Final answer when you divide 504 divided by 3. Understand it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so final answer 168 inches cubed. Now, the next portion I want to show you is cones. And the cones are a lot easier to draw. That is a cone, okay? And what a cone comes from is a cylinder, something like a Coke can, okay? And guess what? This cone fits inside of here, and guess how much it makes up of this? it makes up one-third of it. You know, it looks like it would make up more. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually um, still just one-third of it, okay? Now, we're going to find this area of the cone. So they're telling me um, the radius is 6 feet, 
And the height, what they're putting is a dotted line, and they did dotted line too here, um, is eight feet. Okay, so now we take this information, and remember what volume is. Volume is the area of the base times the height. Okay, and then we're going to take one third of that. So, what is my base? Six. Now, what is my base? Oh, it's a circle. It's a circle. So, because my base is a circle, um, what does the area of a circle uh, formula? Do you remember? It's pi, pi, three, r, pi r squared. Square. That's the area of a circle. I'm going to put AC, area of circle. Oh, that's our subscript. Area of a circle. Okay. okay, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. So it would be 3.14 times, what is my r? 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. So it would be 3.14 times 36. And they're not going to tell me the answer. Okay, <coughs> so can you do that on your phone real quick? What is it? 3.14 times 36. We're just trying to find the area of the base right now. 3.14 times 36. 113.04. 113.04. Um, and this is feet, so feet squared. So that's the area of this. But now we have to multiply um, the volume is area of the base, that times the height. The height is 8. So we're going to multiply that times the 8 to get the volume. 113.04 times 8. 904. So the volume is 904 what? 0 0.32. 0 0.32. Now, that would be if this was a cylinder. Mm -hmm. But because it's a cone, we have to take a third of that. And a third of that is divided by 3. 904 divided by 3 is going to give us 304. 301.44. 300, 301.44. 0.44. That's exactly what the book says. Feet cubed, and it's always going to be cubed, feet cubed, centimeters cubed, inches cubed, because you're working with volume. And volume is length times width times height, um, or three dimensions. Okay? Mm -hmm. Got it? Yep. All right. Now, last thing we're going to do is surface area. And we're going to do the surface area of pyramids and the surface area of cones. So today you learned the volume of a pyramid and the volume of a cone. And now you're going to do surface area of a pyramid and a surface area of a cone. So, again, I'm going to draw a pyramid. Beautiful. There we go. Beautiful pyramid. Okay, and here's what they tell me. They give a six here, and they tell me a five here. This so from the middle spot up to the top, the height is going to be 5. Now, it tells me that it's a regular square pyramid. And guess where the regular word comes in? It's a regular square pyramid. So what does that tell me this side is? And a regular means that it is 6 as well. So, now again, the volume... Um, of a, oh no, I'm sorry, we're not doing volume. Whew, um, I'm not thinking very clear today. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, anyway, uh, we're doing the surface area. Okay, so if I was going to find the area of every surface, that's what surface area is. How many surfaces do I have? Uh, I have a bottom surface, mm -hmm. and it is a what? Square. Square. So I'm going to put um, area of the square. Mm -hmm. All right, what else do we have? You have four triangles. Four triangles, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to do triangle one, triangle two, triangle three, triangle four. This is where it's important to know your formulas. If I'm going to find the area of the square, what am I going to do? Length times width, right? Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. squares and rectangles are the same. But if I'm going to do a triangle area, what is it? Base times height divided by two. But you have to remember that. Base times height divided by two. Base times height divided by two. Base times height divided by two. And base times height divided by two. I do that from the beginning so that when I start putting my numbers in, I don't automatically think, oh, I'm just supposed to multiply this times this and forget to divide by two. So now, here we go. For the area of the square, I'm going to go length times width, which is six times six. So this is 36. And is this in feet? 
centimeters. Centimeters squared because area is always squared. Area is two, six times six, two of them. All right, triangle one. My base is six. My height is what? Five. Five. So six times five divided by two is going to be fifteen centimeters squared, right? Yep. Six times five is thirty. Thirty divided by two is um, fifteen. So if I have one, two, three, four um, triangles then that's 15 times 4, right? Mm -hmm. Which will be 60 centimeters square. So my triangles make up 60 centimeters square, and my square on the bottom makes up 36 centimeters square. So what is my total surface area? 96 centimeters squared. Feel like you understand it? Yep. All right, last one. That was surface area of a pyramid. Now let's do surface area of a cone. And this one is, you're going to have to write down. Um, to find the surface area of a cone, um, you have to end up taking, there's our cone, a slant height. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, basically what you're going to do, you want to write this down. To find the lateral surface area of a cone, or any lateral surface area, um, you're going to do pi r l, and that l is a slant. That's the slant. So, stay with me. Uh, they are telling me that from here to here is 8 meters, and then they tell me that this slant is 10 meters. Now, that's important for our uh, cone to know that the lateral surface area is pi r l and l is the the slant just so you know that if you want to write that down l is the slant because you know what the pi is and the r is the radius okay so um now uh you're going to be tempted stay with me look here for a second um to find the surface area how many surfaces do i have or two. Two. That's where you got to remember. I've got a circle, so I'm going to find the area of a circle. And what else am I going to find? I'm going to find this mid part. It's going to be called the lateral surface area. So I'm going to put LSA, lateral surface area. So you're actually finding two measures. They told us that the lateral surface area is what? Pi R L. And what is the area of a circle? Pi R Squared. Mm -hmm. Write those down first thing. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to put the numbers in. Um, pi would be 3.14. R would be 8. And 8 squared would be 64. Right? So what is 3.14 times 64? You got that? Yeah, I'm kidding. 200.96. 200. 0.96, and that's the, and this is in meters, meters squared. That's the area of my circle. Okay, that's one of my answers. Now let's do this middle section, the lateral part of it, um, which is going to be pi r l, 3.14. R is eight. L is ten. Right? Okay. So let's multiply that and tell me what the answer for the LSA is, lateral surface area. So I'm multiplying what? Uh, pi times the R8 times the L10. Okay. It's basically going to be 80 times 3, which is going to be 240. 251.2. 251.2? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so 251.2 meters squared. Then when you add those two together to find out the total surface area, you're going to get 451, now a little bit more than that, 452. What's it going to be? 452.16, that's, that, that's just in my hands, so, and I just looked it up, okay? So, 452.16 meters squared to find the total surface area because it had two surfaces. You got it? Yep. That's lesson 72.